Welcome back. We're still working through high school Americanisms. Uh, hope you've enjoyed some of the other ones that we've uh, gone through. Uh, let's get right into it. And my thing didn't advance. There we go. All right, so page count versus word count. A lot of times, um, you know, when you have a an essay, a report, something like that do, uh, the teacher will uh, will specify that it has to be X number of pages. Um, the only thing I can come up with for this one is that it's just easier. Um, it's easier to tell how many pages you have. It's easier to tell um, the students that the requirement is X number of pages. Um, could you figure out the average number of words per 10 pages? Sure. No problem. Um, but then you, you have to make sure that the students know how to figure out how many words they're, that are there in their report. Um, so that's the only thing I can think of. Uh, can word count be abused? Not word count, page count. Can page count be abused? Yes. And probably quite a, a lot more easily than you would abuse word count. Um, <clears throat> I have known people to change the font size, you know, increase the font size to take up more space, uh, to adjust the margins so the margins are wider, so there's less room that you have to fill up on the page, uh, which means that a lot of teachers, not only do they specify page count, but they will also specify font size, and margins, and things like that, so that the students can't use that kind of loophole to to make it easier to cheat. Um, <clears throat> I also had a, a teacher once who would not accept uh, typewritten assignments. Um, they, they had to be uh, handwritten. Uh, his thinking behind that was that um, he couldn't tell who had written it if you had typed it up. It could have been your parents, your friend, whatever. Um, <clears throat> whereas if it was handwriting, he could compare it to other things you'd submitted and make sure that it was actually you. Although that still begs the question of, did I actually do it or did I just have someone dictate it and I wrote it down? Or heck, they could have typed it out for me and then I wrote it down by hand myself. <clears throat> um, I actually, for that class, turned in a typewrit typewritten book report, but he didn't tell us beforehand. Um, and he actually liked me as a student, so he let me get away with it for the first one, but he wouldn't on the subsequent ones. Anyway, <clears throat> that is the reason for page count versus word count. I know that <clears throat> if the teacher said that your report has to be 10,000 words, if it's not 10,000 words, uh, you know, you've failed, uh, and it doesn't matter how big the font size is uh, or the margins, it's going to be the same way. So I realize that, but, <clears throat> and I also realize that programs like Word and things will actually count the words for you, but uh, I'm, it's just easier to figure out how many pages uh, you have rather than how many words are in your report. Anyway, moving on. Rope climbing. Is rope climbing a thing in gyms in the United States? Um, I, sh I assume so. Um, the schools that I attended didn't have rope climbing. We never had to do that, not even once. Um, I know that some of the gyms in some high schools here in the U.S. do have the rope climbing thing. So, yes, it is a thing. Uh, is it a thing that's everywhere in the United States? No, no, it's not. Um, <clears throat> uh, it is a... a something that's very physical uh, to require students to do. Um, and <clears throat> I don't I don't know that it actually shows how physically fit you are by being able to climb a rope. Um, you could argue that because you can climb a rope, you uh, can get yourself out of situations that would necessitate climbing, but Who has a, a, a rope that's good for climbing? 
you know, the <clears throat> the ropes that they typically use for these climbing things, they're actually pretty fat ropes, um, like two inches in diameter, uh, which is what um, I'd have to look up how many uh, centimeters that is. It is five, 5.8 centimeters. Anyway, <clears throat> anyway, the the it's not like you just have a rope that you can um, you can have somebody climb and you know you've got it there and it's ready to go. So I don't know, uh, but yes, they do have them. They are they are in some schools, not uh, not every school. Uh, school announcements. School announcements, uh, they're usually done in the morning. Um, the principal isn't usually the person who does the school announcements. Uh, usually it's a, a, a secretary, um, or it could be the students themselves, depending on, uh, on the school. Like elementary school and stuff where the kids are younger, uh, they're not going to be doing them. <clears throat> uh, but as the students get older, uh, it gives the students an opportunity to uh, have a responsibility at the school, things like that. And so the students may do them. Uh, they also may do some sort of televised uh, announcements in the morning. The, uh, the schools usually, I sh shouldn't say usually, it is a lot more usual for all, this, all the, um, these classrooms at a school to have a television in them now. Um, I remember when our school... My, it was when I was in junior high. <clears throat> I remember when our school got um, televisions in, uh, in all the classrooms. Uh, prior to that, if the teacher wanted to show a video or something, they had to go check out a TV and bring it into the classroom, which was always a nice thing. Um, but uh, later, um, the school got a grant to install TVs in all the classrooms. So they got money and had the equipment in installed um, and uh, we would have <clears throat> announcements and that would you know they would talk about the sports teams and who won and whatever else they'd also say things like I remember parent teacher conferences coming up or um, the school's going to be closed on this day or you know, we're having an assembly uh, you know at this time um, things like that uh, but they would also have a, a regular news broadcast. It was only like five, ten minutes maybe every morning. Um, and it was put on by students, but not students at our school. Uh, it was students at a, an, um, that were in a special program. At, I, I have no idea where they were. Um, it was called Channel One. Um, and it was probably, you know, uh, sort of a uh, program for future uh, uh, reporters and things, people who wanted to try that out, uh, they would do do the news as students. Um, but now, uh, with the televisions in all the classrooms, uh, it's a lot easier for the the um, the schools to do announcements and to have the students involved and even uh, broadcast some sort of uh, school news program to all the classrooms. I can't say that every school has uh, televisions in all the classrooms, but I know that uh, it's a lot more common now to have a television in each classroom. And so they can do that. But they will have um, so, some sort of announcements. They'll, uh, Like I said, the school is always busy. There's always something going on. And so they usually try to keep the students informed about what's going on with the school, um, and they go from there. Uh, schools without windows. Um, none of the schools that I went to uh, didn't have windows. Uh, all, all of the classrooms had windows in every single school that I was in. Um, they even opened in some of them. It could be that some of the schools without windows are maybe in a more dangerous place. And so they, they don't have the windows 
Um, but the the way that my school was built, um, <clears throat> each classroom was actually uh, facing an exterior wall of the building. So it didn't matter if you were on east, west, north, south um, of the building, you, the classroom had windows in it. Um, some of the, I say that, but I should um, roll that back just a bit. We have some tech technical classes, like I, I took electronics in, in high school. There was also wood uh, and metal shop classes. Um, those classes wouldn't necessarily have windows. Those ones were um, usually put in a, in a space where they could have um, tools and equipment and things like that. And um, it would be easy to break a window uh, and then maybe steal some equipment. So those classrooms wouldn't necessarily have exterior access. Uh, they may have like a, a loading bay or something because they may have to take in shipments of materials and stuff but uh, they wouldn't necessarily have exterior windows. Um, I would assume that if a school didn't have windows, they were maybe in a more dangerous area, and so they were trying to protect the students from maybe what might go on outside. But as far as I know, schools have windows. Um, I can't think of any school that... Uh, I mean, even the interior classes at my school, we had a, a courtyard in the middle of my school, so even the the um, the classrooms on the in interior of the building they faced into the courtyard, so they still had windows. Um, I think it's pretty important that the students be able to see the sun uh, every once in a while, and not just because they're going outside to you know run a mile or whatever. Anyway, there may be schools without windows, but it's more common that they do. Let's see. It more, there may be schools without windows, but it's more common that they do have windows, from my experience. Uh, rival schools, yes, we do have rival schools. Um, rival schools nowadays are—it's more of a friendly rivalry. Um, there's not necessarily a um, an, a, a huge antagonism. Uh, for instance, this, the, there are five high schools uh, in, in the city that, where I live. Um, I shouldn't say in the city. In the, in the area where I live, we have five, five high schools that are close by. And they all are pretty much rivals of each other because they play each other at football, baseball, basketball, what, what have you. They, they play against each other. Um, and so because of that, they do have a, a pretty friendly rivalry. Um, it's not like if, um, you know, my kids who, who go to one school, they won't be friends with someone who goes to another school. It's just one of those things where, hey, if we beat you, it's like, ah, we beat you. Uh, and then you move on with your life. Uh, back in the day, uh, the school rivalries were a lot more fierce in a lot of areas. Um, and maybe those rivalries are still a lot more fierce at maybe the college level than at the 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 high school, junior high level. Um, I know that uh, my mom used to tell me that they, uh, the school, the high school she went to had a, um, a rivalry with a, another high school and this other high school, I forget what, um, what the name of it was, but I do know that the name of the school started with an S. They would go up uh, uh, on a mountain behind, uh, kind of behind the city and they would carve a big S in the mountain and uh, that stood for their school. And you could see this S from anywhere in the valley. Well, her school, um, they had an O and a T in their name. It started with an O and uh, their mascot was the Titans, if I remember right. Anyway, <clears throat> they would go up to where they carved this S into the mountain and they change it into an OT every year. So this school would go and they'd cut the S and then the other school, the rival, would go and change it so that it was no longer an S, but it was an O with a little T inside of it. And, and once again, you could see it across the valley. Um, 
And so, yes, we do have these rival schools. Um, it really isn't a, a, as big a deal as sometimes you see portrayed in movies, at least uh, around here. Maybe in other places it, it can get more fierce as far as the rivalry goes. And as far as I understand it, the rivalries in the past were a lot more fierce, a lot more... Um, uh, uh, maybe mean spirited, where now it's like uh, you'd, you'd still support the other school, um, but hey, you know if we're fi if we're if we're um, in a sports competition against your school, yeah, I really want my school to win. Um, but yeah, so yes, we do have rival schools and things. Uh, all right, vending machines. We do have vending machines in schools. Yep. Um, I knew several people in, uh, in my school who wouldn't actually eat lunch at school. Uh, like, you know, I talked in a previous video about cafeterias where we'd have food and they try to make it a nutritious, balanced meal. Well, I did have friends who would go, basically go and get a bag of chips and a soda uh, from the vending machines and that's what they would have for lunch or they'd grab a candy bar. Um, it was nice to be able to have snacks like that at school, um, but um, yeah, we have them. Uh, some of it comes about that the school actually gets money from the vending machine company to to sponsor uh, the school, so they allow the school allows them to put those vending machines in the school so that you know, it's like, hey, we're a Pepsi school or hey, we're a Coke school. Um, those are kind of the two big ones. But yeah, the, they do have the vending machines in the schools. Uh, swimming pools at schools. Yes, we do have swimming pools in schools. Uh, I don't know that every school has a swimming pool. Um, I, for instance, I know that the school closest to me that has a swimming pool um, <clears throat> is it also hosts the rec center. So it's the high school and it's attached to the rec center. So the pool is not just used by the high school. It's actually used by the community. Um, and it's, it, it seemed like a really good uh, fit for putting that kind of together in the same area. But we also have like swimming competitions. So my team or my school may, may have a swim team, uh, a water polo team, uh, and they'll go and they'll compete against other schools. And so it is convenient to have the um, pool there located at the school so the students can practice and also have a, a, an arena for their, their swim meets and their water polo uh, matches. Uh, most of the schools that I know of that have the, the pool, they also open that pool to the public. So the school makes a little bit of additional money by um, uh, having that pool open to the public. The, school will charge a fee for um, patrons to use the pool uh, and it'll be open you know a couple hours uh, every day maybe after school's over for the day um, and then on weekends it'll be open for a lot longer so that if you want to go and swim you can go down there and they'll have it it's kind of nice because they'll have it open for both like free swim, which is basically you just play around in the pool. And they'll also have it open for lap swim. So if you're really interested in getting fit um, and you like swimming, you can go swim at the pool and, and swim laps. Um, that's one of the, uh, the things that I liked about uh, uh, college was that um, they had open, or they had lap swim time. Um, and I could go down to the pool and, and just swim laps. So uh, that's swimming pools at the schools. Uh, balls and dance. Uh, the frequency of balls and dance, it's going to um, uh, change depending on the schools. Um, but you typically have about one dance a month. Um, and it's not going to be a, like a formal dance or, or a ball. It's just going to be a dance. So like they'll have the sweethearts dance for Valentine's Day. Um, they may have a, a Halloween themed dance uh, in October. Um, and maybe that, that's more frequent than, than it actually is. Cause I'm trying to think if they had one in like November or something like that. they would have one, um, earlier in the year. Cause we call it the homecoming dance. 
Um, that's like the first, um, the first football game that you play at your home stadium for the year, uh, something like that. And you would have a big dance and there's a whole big thing. And, and, uh, you only have two formal dances per year. They have uh, the senior ball and the junior prom. Um, they also call it the senior prom. Basically, it's kind of the senior the senior ball or the senior prom is for the, the seniors to go to as kind of a last hurrah. It's right before the end of the year, right before graduation. And then they have the junior prom because they don't want to leave the junior class out of it. And really, anybody can go. You just buy a ticket and you can either you can either ask someone to the dance or you can just go go with your friends it's um it may be that that wasn't the case originally but that's kind of how it is now um i actually my wife works at a, at a high school and so she, uh, she has to go and chaperone these dances <clears throat> and the chaperoning is pretty loose here uh, mostly it it involves making sure that people buy tickets to get into the dance. Um, it's not like she goes around and makes sure that people aren't dancing too close together or something like that. Um, but she's actually had me come with her because she doesn't want to do this by herself. And, and um, they usually end up going pretty late and she doesn't like driving home in the dark alone. So I go with her. Um, and, uh, you know, just from what I've seen, um, it's pretty relaxed as far as, you know, you can go with, with a group of friends, um, and just dance with people there at the, at the dance, or you can totally, um, uh, you know, get a date and everything. And they do look somewhat like this picture that I've got here on the slide, um, with the, the guys in tuxedos or nice suits and the girls in, in more fancy dresses. Um, but yeah, that's, the, the, the fancy dress is usually for the, the junior prom and the senior ball. Um, the other dances, like when I was in high school, we did a dance for Sadie Hawkins Day, and I'd have to look up who that was again because I don't remember. Um, but in that, it was a it, it was a reverse dance. So instead of the guys asking the girls to the dance, the girls asked the guys to the dance. And the tradition that we had was the way you could tell who asked who out is the you would get a you would get matching shirts. So uh, a girl would ask you out, she'd get you a t-shirt, and then she'd wear one that matched you, yours. Either it was the same t-shirt or some sort of theme between the two, uh, and so you could see who was who was paired up at the dance, um, and uh, it was kind of fun. Um, I think my I think my daughter actually wears the shirt that I used to, uh, that I, that I got for that dance way back in high school. Um, I think she wears it for pajamas or something like that. Anyway, so, um, they, they do have them, uh, the dances, but the dances are usually pretty informal as far as, you know, you go in jeans and a t-shirt and then you have the balls, which are the senior prom and the, and the junior prom. Um, and then we're finally going to get through the last of the, the high school um, Americanisms, high school lacrosse. Um, these actually are not high school players. UC Davis, uh, I think, is a college team. Anyway, um, that being said, <clears throat> we do have lacrosse in high schools. Um, it's not as popular as, say, football or basketball or um, baseball. Uh but it's gaining ground here in the United States. Uh, the thing with, with high school sports is they try to make it fair. So if you have um, like one sports team for guys, then you have to have a sport for girls too. And so they try to balance it out. So if they have all the, t all, all the, um, um, all the teams and, and sports already decided, your school may not have a lacrosse team because you would either have to get one rid of one of the guys sports or find a new girls sport to balance it out. And yeah, you could probably do high, uh, girls lacrosse, boys lacrosse. Um, but the thing is, is they may have like a girls lacrosse or field hockey team already. And so they can't 
add that because for the boys' side, because they've got to do that. They do this weird balancing thing. Uh, they may have a club which kind of skirts that rule, um, but then it doesn't have an official like. It's not an official like team sport of the school. It's just kind of a club thing. Um, so they do have lacrosse. My nephew played lacrosse in high school, um, but he also played football and a bunch of other stuff. <clears throat> uh, so yes, it exists. Um, I had a, f a friend back in high school. Uh, well, actually, it was just after high school in college. Uh, he played lacrosse. In, in high school for, for the school that he went to. Um, so yeah, it, it's here, it's gaining momentum. Um, so more and more schools are picking it up. Um, when I was in uh, high school, my school did not have a lacrosse team. We had football, basketball, baseball, soccer. Um, I want to, um, they had softball. So they had football for the guys. <clears throat> they had a girl, boys and girls, uh, basketball teams. They had a boys softball or boys baseball team and a girls softball team. And they had soccer for boys, soccer for girls. Um, they had wrestling. Um, I, I don't remember all the rest of them. Those are the ones that I can remember off the top of my head. Uh, oh, track, track and field. So they had that for boys and girls. Um, I think they kind of counted like Dance, the drill, dance drill team and cheerleading as kind of a sport thing for the girls. They also had uh, swimming, uh, boys and girls swimming teams um, as well in my high school. So there, there really wasn't a place in my high school for another team. They just had so many of them. Uh, so we didn't have lacrosse. So that's it for my uh, high school Americanisms. We'll get into some uh, other Americanisms next week. Um, this video is kind of going to be longer. Uh, some of the the uh, things were short, so I was able to get through a little bit more. And uh, my timer, I can't see it, so I, I'm not sure exactly how much time I've taken. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, let me know in the comments. Like and subscribe as always. And if there's an Americanism that you'd like explained, please let me know. Hit me up in the comments and I'll, I'll uh, add that to another video. Um, thanks for watching.